Hello everybody and welcome to another devlog for a game that still does not have a name and that is okay because that is just how I roll. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the rabbit hole that I went down. And that's not to say that I exited the scope of the game or went off scope or, or anything that's scope related scope. Um, but just rather I started on something and it became much bigger and... Uh, sometimes that happens, and that's fine. And what that was was putting shops in the town. That was the first thing I was going to do. I was like, you know what? This could be something. I'll drop a shop in. Um, I also there's no NPCs here, but the NPCs are are kind of are kind of here. They're not done because I was like, I'll just take a moment and work on shops. That is that is not how this is supposed to go. Um, but here's the shop right here. I decided to keep them outside. And this is just, you know, the initial iteration of a shop. They'll look better and, and make more sense. Right now it's just a carpet with some items on there that have a white outline. So you know you can interact with them. And if you walk up to them, the price will appear. And then you can press the interact button to see if you can buy it or not. And if you can, it adds it to your inventory. And that that's basically it. Um, there are five items here in this shop, and they're they're statically put in, but um, I wanted to cross that bridge into randomly selecting from a pool of items based on the area and the town size and, and a bunch of stuff I want to put into there. Um, but I haven't gotten to that yet because I only have a couple things here like a rock, a stick, and some armor. So I uh, thought I was going to probably start out by making some more items. Oh, and in case anyone wonders, I do plan on changing even how the the prices appear when you get up close. There's there's no reason you shouldn't be able to know what something costs from across the screen without having to walk all the way over to it. So uh, that is something I want to work on. But again, I didn't quite get to this because I thought, hey, let's add some more items first. That way we can make it select the items and, and put them into the shop first. And then I looked over at my items. And as you can tell, um, the JSON file is, is pretty big, and there's only like uh, like 10 items or so. I don't know, but it's 166 lines long. So this is uh, probably a really obvious problem to see in that it's really hard to edit, make edits to items. It's kind of weird adding more items and comparing how they look. It's extremely difficult if you want to add a new data point for each item because that involves adding it to every single existing item and yeah you can do things with macros and, and whatever but visually this is very difficult to deal with and so what i ended up doing is going over to uh google sheets and putting all the information in here uh, from Google Sheets, I can export this as a Excel file and then use some web-based uh, Excel to JSON converter, which gets me pretty close. Um, what this outputs is in the JSON file through the converter is an array of dictionaries, but the way my JSON file is set up for inventory or for items is a dictionary of dictionaries. So it does take a little bit of tweaking just to adjust that. I did write some macros for that that kind of work. Um, and so that's fine. That That's not a huge process, but uh, whatever I can do to be able to visually look at the items, because this makes it a lot quicker to add items. And I plan on this game having a lot of items. I mean, if you're going to have things randomly selected, you want something to at least be different each time you go through. And uh, let's take a look at this while I'm here. Um, this is how the each each item in the game, uh, regardless, has these same data points, just because that's easier. And, and the way I wrote the inventory code looks for them, <laughs> whether you use it or not, which isn't ideal, but whatever. I'm just going to deal with it. Uh, item category, which of course makes sense. If it's a weapon, uh, hats are actually your armor. Um, originally, when you had an armor piece and a helmet, uh, which was a hat, uh, that was divided up that way. And when I shifted over to just having armor, for some reason, I used the hat variable and, and not the armor. So um, hat just means armor. It's not a big deal. It's just kind of weird when other people look at it, which um, is now. Um, but hat means armor. Let's see, there's more weapons, there's accessories. I added some of those for the first time ever. And I haven't done anything with ammo yet. Uh, I I had a question on ammo because the rocks you can find don't have ammo associated with them. And it's just a nice ranged weapon. But 
ranged weapons have a tendency just to be superior to melee weapons in general. So having some sort of restriction or limitation there with uh, an ammo count may be the way the way to go. Uh, I think it might be, I don't know. I'm one of those people that in games, if I have something that's a limited resource, I tend to just not use it. So that's why I was kind of hesitant on making uh, like arrows its own thing. But um, I'm, I'm going to try. We're going to see how that goes. Uh, the slime glob, it's a resource because that's sometimes you want enemies to drop stuff and then you can do stuff with that. I don't, I'm not going to have like crafting or anything in the game, but with that in mind, I'm going to have a type of crafting. Um, let me just contradict myself. I kind of want a, a different type of shop and, and th I'm just spitballing this idea. So it may or may not happen where you purchase things, not just with gold, but kind of gold and items combined in a sort of like monster hunter weapon building sort of thing where you just need a variety of things to to purchase a weapon that is you know represents the stuff that you use to uh make it um i don't know uh we'll, we'll see what happens there uh every weapon and this is mostly for weapons and maybe armor uh there's an element associated and there's also a damage type and these are basically going to be used for the uh sort of puzzle like things that you'll encounter in the game so if you have some vines that you need to get through you could use cut type damage to get through them if you have torches you need to light you'll want something with like a fire element it's it's not going to be super complicated but again you have the the hot bar of like you know eight different items you can put in there so might as well make it so you somewhat need to use more than one item i guess that's that's sort of the mentality there um and again they'll have some impact on like certain enemies will be weak to other elements or whatever i'm not gonna pigeonhole people into like um i think i think the worst example of like forcing people to have things would be you know the original pokemon games and having like the hm moves that were like terrible but you had to carry them around in case you ever needed to use cut or strength um that's kind of like not nothing wrong with those games but like that's kind of what i want to stay as far away from is like i don't want you to be forced to like fill your hot bar with specific damage types and elements but um, if you do, it'll be helpful, but it won't be anything that roadblocks you and makes you force, you know, have to go into your inventory and find your, your flame sword or whatever. Um, critical chance. I have not implemented critical damage yet, but I wanted to because I like seeing big numbers, especially when they, you know, like the bigger font, the brighter colors. Um, so I'm just putting that in mostly because I like the eye candy of critical, <laughs> critical hits. Um, item attack is just used for damage calculation or effect calculation in, in conjunction with the heal staff. Uh, armor rating gives you armor and some weapons will be able to give armor as well. You know, why not? Um, item speed is specifically uh, how long it takes per, um, it's in seconds. So a 0.75 speed is, you know, three quarters of a second uh, in between each attack. So that's pretty easy to manage. Um, knockback is a little weirder. Uh, 390 is the sticks knockback right now, which is fairly decent. Um, rocks barely make a dent. Um, item speed and knockback in game with the tooltip will not be represented by the actual net values that you see here because it's weird to see 390 for knockback and have it not, you know, completely knock an enemy into the stratosphere. Um, so I'm going to use some terms in there to describe like average, great, you know, super strong or whatever. Um, stack, stack size is, oops, sorry about that. Um, needed water mid sentence. Stack size is just how many things can stack in the inventory that actually existed prior. I just didn't use it right now. It's just ammo and the slime globs are the only things you could do that with. Um, 99 is the limit entirely because anything greater than that adds that extra character in the inventory space and it it's too large for the box so the only reason there's a limitation here is because the font looks weird uh when you get to 100 and higher that's literally the only reason uh, base cost, so this is the value of things when you buy and sell, except when you buy stuff, it's going to cost more than the base cost by like 20%. When you sell, it's going to, you'll get 20% less than the base cost, so we can keep that whole uh, 
uh, unfairness in buying and selling to where you're always losing. Um, and then rarity. Um, I added rarity in a little while ago. It This corresponds to the color of the text for the item name. Uh, and that's what that does. I'm, I'm using just standard. I, I googled, you know, rarity color chart because um, one of the things you don't want to do is reinvent the wheel with something that's pretty commonly known. You know, the white and the green are always less common than like purple and, and gold and uh, trying to be consistent with what the rest of the world does is probably a good idea. So it just doesn't get weird. Like if white was super rare, um, that would probably confuse a lot of people. Um, the most important thing I did here was Sprite and Icon. So the way this worked before was that neither of these were actually data points and this made things confusing and hard and I don't want to get into it too much, but um, each, so the icon is how something appears in your inventory. It's how something appears in a shop. It's the icon. It's just how the item looks in its static form. The sprite is sometimes different if it's a weapon or armor because those have animation frames. And if you, and I did this before, I tried to like crop out a corner of the animation if it was a weapon and use that for the icon just to save myself the time of not making the icons. And um, it got clunky and out of hand and a lot more harder to manage because I was just trying to save a few seconds and I've, I cost myself a lot more time in doing this. Um, but the best part about this is I can create something like this copper ring as an accessory and it's sprites old ring, it's icons old ring, and I can create an iron ring and a silver ring, make those changes in here and just use the same sprite and icon for now for placeholders. And they, they that's all it is. They can exist in the game now because the data is there. And before, if you, you know, you didn't have a sprite, you didn't have the icon, uh, the, you couldn't. Uh, even have the JSON data for it because the game would try to recognize, you know, tie that to whatever when it was accessed and it would it would blow up and crash and it was really painful. And then I would make a typo in something and it would also crash and it became a lot of weird work to just make one item. And so like I, I didn't make a lot of items at first because I was like, well, I'm going to wait till I do a bunch so I can go through the process for each one. But now, you know, if I wanted to, this is really weird, but I can make a stick right here and just drop this down here and be like, you know what? I'm going to make a new weapon. Uh, we're going to call this like, you know, iron death sword. And, you know, I can change the stuff, give it like a 30% critical uh, attack damage is 15. Gives you 70 armor because this won't be in it. Um, I can do that. And now that now it exists. Um, What's going to happen, though, is you're you're going to have the stick sprite and the, the stick icon. And I'm kind of misleading a little bit with this because this actually won't work because each weapon does need a corresponding object as well um, because that manages their hitboxes and everything. But for a weapon, that's what I have to do. Um, and that's But that's it to get the data in right there. And honestly, if I really wanted to... Yeah, that's the only thing. Um, yeah, it's not as cool as I thought it was going to be. But for steel armor, okay, steel armor, I definitely can do this. Let's try this again with something that works. We're going to call this bone armor. And there we go. I could do that. I could change whatever. I can give this an armor rating of 320 so you can be immortal. And then there we go. And that's all I need. That exists in the game. Just like that, I can instance it. I could put the armor out there. It's just going to look just like steel armor until I make the sprite later, put the sprite in, and call it, you know, bone armor for the sprite and then that'll look for the bone armor file um extremely helpful and again i just export this uh upload it to a converter and then and then do a little macro or whatever to make it the way i do stuff and that's how it's going to appear in the game so it'll be really quick for me to make a lot of equipment a lot of armor weapons still going to take a little bit but that's fine um they deserve um the extra touch there anyway to make them to make them good and to make them right. And now back over here where we're at. Um, I want to go down. And something else I've been working on is, uh, you know, related to all this is, let's, uh, not fairies. Where's like a, where's the worm? Where's the worm? These are, these guys are pretty good for this. So I'm going to throw some rocks at him and, and there you go. He dropped an item. I've added uh, item drops in the game. You do have to hit space to pick them up, but... Um, there you go. There's a slime glob. 
and it has a value of one and it doesn't have a use right now and there's the i kind of want the number to be shifted to the side but that's fine um here you can see the new tool tips and i did some things here that are okay the first the human armor here or the commoner clothes is weird looking because i blacked out the face um because i did that with the steel armor because i wanted the steel armor's icon to not have like your face in it because when you walk into a shop or you see a shop and you see a steel armor there with a person's face it is indistinguishable from an npc and that needed to be changed and so you know putting the steel armor over here and having it appear on your character looks great um not really sure how i want to handle like this type of clothes where it's not like a full armor suit um so yeah this is weird and creepy right now and we'll just keep it that way you know what boop bye um defense and power are still up here they actually make sense now in a sense but um i don't know i might, I might change some of the terminology on power because your power is still your weapon but it's your weapon this is like added power from your equipment i guess um also it is august and i'm still having seasonal allergies it's it's great um okay so the last thing i want to talk about which again there wasn't that much this this became a rabbit hole just because i wanted to add a shop and i went down changing all the stuff and all the structure and i had to go and change the code for the inventory to handle some of the new stuff and it, and it took a while but if we look at this armor piece here we can see that i have put icons in as opposed to words to describe things like attack as a sword uh, defense as a shield the little like crosshairs is critical percent chance and, and the coins cost i'm not sure how sold i am on the crosshairs being critical percent chance but um i don't know what icon i would use to describe a critical percent chance and i cannot recall of the million games i've played in my life and the millions of games that used icons to represent critical hit chance i can't i can't recall any of them so who knows um as you can tell with the stick, it has fast speed. I made a really ugly looking boot there. And uh, what says average is supposed to kind of be a baseball bat. I know it looks weird right now, but um, that's supposed to represent knockback. I'll probably do something different for that um, later because I don't, I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure that means anything looking at it. The boot's fine. The boot's, you know, feet always represent speed in some regard. So you can tell it's average knockback as opposed to 390. And it's fast speed, even though it's just because it's less than a second. Uh, I, I might tweak in the code how it interprets different values. But for now, that's fast. Kind of like this. It's average speed, uh, low knockback, one damage, and it's less value. This ring gives you a 2% critical hit chance when you have it equipped. Again, uh, critical <laughs> and 10 armor because I was messing around. Um, yeah, this is the iron ring if I wanted to add in the other rings, like I showed earlier. Super simple, but uh, right now this one gives a 2% critical hit bonus, which actually does affect your stat in the game, but just there's, there's no function that does anything with that. Yeah, but anyway, again, you can equip the rings. They don't have a sprite, so because they don't show up on your character. And that's that's it there. I don't have shields back yet. I'm not sure how I want to interpret or add them in. I'll talk about them another time with how shields used to work. And I still have to do something with the actual menu because there's nothing really there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's as far as I made it. There's been a lot of other stuff going on. As you can tell, my speed of my stick has uh, slowed down to match the speed that's in the JSON data, which is great. Um, that actually was not... Originally in the code, the JSON data was just for how it would show up on the tooltip and the item, and everything else was like hard-coded to the item. It made no sense, so I spent some time changing all that to where I can just change the... Uh, the data in like that spreadsheet and export it and that'll apply to everything um man something weird happened here like the hitboxes for these trees unless it's always been there it's up at the top of the tree i i can fix that but i still don't i still don't want those trees um the last thing is there's the naked npcs they look like you um i don't know if i talked about this before but i'll just mention it now there's another shop it's got a bush in it which is kind of great um each character 
in here is uh, one of two different types of NPCs. And I was just kind of starting this and I, I stopped because I don't have enough sprites for characters and armor and stuff made yet. And I was like, well, I can do that after I do the shops because the shops will make me uh, create armor and then I could use that to uh, make the people. Like I said, rabbit hole. Everything's rabbit hole. There's two characters here. There's This is the... Um, every NPC is either a peasant or a guard. And what that means is peasants all say, I make my own soup, Gavna. Why not? And then this guy is also a peasant. And let's see if we can find a guard. This is highly important. This is still another another peasant. Um, I I really want to find. I really okay. Fine. There's just a bunch of soup makers here. Ooh, I should use that in the game. Just people calling you a soup maker is like a weird insult that doesn't actually make sense. And then there's some shops on top of each other and a bunch of people running around. Um, yeah, there's some, there's uh, definitely some things I need to do. Ah, I'm just a guard from a f poor family. Of course, there it is. Found a guard. And that person makes their own soup. Um, so that's it. Just a bunch of naked people in the towns right now. They look like you. It's kind of creepy. Um, just some carpets with some stuff for sale. Um, I'm still working on a lot of the base stuff here. Like I said, this isn't like a huge update where you can actually see a lot. This is a barrel house. There you go. You can go outside now. Um, you know, it's just been a lot of kind of behind the scenes, restructuring the inventory, redoing all that, and then um, making slime globs that have no no purpose. Just put them down here. You can't even you can't even hot bar them. It's I don't know what they do. Um, I might use them for like a weapon component or something i don't know it, okay the big part of this is like what's driving this what's driving the slime globs i really like it when um like finding rare item drops and stuff from enemies and you can't do that unless you actually have drops from enemies so i started with that without actually having an idea what i want these to be for and i that's probably really really bad uh, mentality to go into something like i just want things to drop stuff that's cool and I have no purpose for it, but I will. I'll make a purpose. Like I said, it's probably going to be like a monster hunter -y, um, thing where you can build weapons and armors with stuff. And, and I'll have that be separate from the regular shops where you can just buy stuff. It'll be fun to have different types of shops too. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I should have a lot more done before the next devlog. But yeah, that's just some, some behind the scenes stuff that had to keep happening. And... Um, I like how I've added the slime globs. I've given them to every enemy to drop. Oh yeah, Ugh. loot tables. Loot tables are being made. And again, I can't really make huge loot tables when there's only one item. So it, it's that's the rabbit hole. I just I started with wanting to put a shop in and I ended up going in all these different directions, restructuring inventory, creating drops from enemies just, just because. And then uh, I, just, I just wanted the towns to look a little bit better. And, and that's what happened. Like I said, it's still all within scope of the game. It's just a rabbit hole that had to be uh, traveled at one point or another, and that's where I am now. But that's that's about all I've got for today. Um, it's not a lot, but progress is being made, and hopefully it'll be something more exciting next time. And if not, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I I don't know what I'm doing here. We'll just we'll just see. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Um, until, until the next time, everybody, um, remember the, the, you can break a barrel with a stick. Yes.